The 35 of the ultimate team makes a very good start. Jean-Baptiste Lay does the first stint before handing over to Pierre Nicolet. De Ligier is in the top five and is heading towards the top three. All of this under the gaze of Francois Herriot. Of course, there's uncertainty there because of the weather and the track conditions are very changeable. When that happens from lap to lap, you need to be very focused and that's the most tiring thing. It's more mental than physical. Adapting to the rapidly changing conditions is the most difficult thing. One hour 30 after the start, Jan Clare hands over his car to his teammates in second position after an incredible fight with the number seven. They started strongly. I think it was Olivier Lombard with the first stint and he put in a strong rhythm. I managed to hang on and they overtake them and then I looked after my tyres. I think that was the key. We'll see how my teammates fare out there, but we're handily positioned. So, the standings at half distance are as follows. Zachary Ball, Besançon, Foubert, fifth. They're putting in a calm and intelligent race and have already climbed five positions since the start. While the number 40 is fourth, the incredible Zolanger has shot up 20 positions in the standings. I put my head down and gave it everything I had for two hours. It's true we didn't go well in qualifying this morning in the rain and there were small mistakes in our setup. The start of the race in the rain was difficult for me, but I was patient and once it dried out I was able to show up more and drive normally. That meant I was able to claw through the field little by little. The ultimate number 35 is in the top three now. The objective is first place and the lap times and the strategy employed are all designed with this in mind. Claire Trier and Perrois hold on to second. Leading, six places better off than at the start, the number 17 of Angelbert and Lafargue, father and son. A quick glance at Kubrick, Beck and Michel. At two thirds distance, the Palmier 42 is fifth overall and leading the prestige category. The 35 continues its fantastic move towards the top spot. Two hours from the end, it's second. On paper, we can certainly believe in it, Touchwood. Reaching the chequered flag would already be a good thing. Being on the podium, even better, and a win would be the icing on the cake. I think the 29 will get Clary back in the car before the chequered flag. Jordan Perroir is driving very well too, so they're pulling out a bit of an advantage. Yann will probably put in even more of a gap over us. Unfortunately, Francois Herriot runs into on-track problems. The front right has taken a hit. The cost of the repairs, three places. The 35 will finish the six hours of Barcelona in fifth. The win goes to the 17 of the Lafargues and Angelbert. Clairet, Perrois and Trier in the 29 were just a few litres fuel short of getting the win themselves. Third on the podium, the remarkable number 30 team, Acquery, Bol, Besançon and Foubert. The last 30 minutes were tough. I wanted to keep my pace high and that put wear into the tyres. And at the end, I had nothing left. It was important to score big points from the start of the championship. I've learned from competing in VDV in the past that it's vital to finish every race. I learned that the hard way in 2013. At the end of our stints, we lacked a bit of consistency and performance. It was difficult for me, but we'll work hard and we'll see what happens at Mugello. In fourth and winners of the prestige category, Bazo, Tyrion and Rion. Fifth, Entelay, Nicolet and Erio. Sixth, Kubrick, Beck and Michel from the prestige category. Seventh, Danilou, Maulini and Wolf. And in eighth, Darosha and Calais. The defending champions in the GT category are Patrice and Paul Lafargue. Patrice, how was your winter? Oh, a quiet winter preparing for the new season and some time spent with the family because that's more complicated the rest of the year. We did the 24 hours of Dubai for fun and so it was a studious winter that got sporty just before the season start. Paul, you'll be busy again competing in both the GTs and the Protos. You're GT champions. Have you had time to relax and realise what you achieved? Est-ce que vous avez eu euh, le temps de, de décompresser et de bien réaliser ce qui s'était passé? Ah, déjà, moi, well, for pour me, moi, racing euh, relaxes course, me. 
for me, it's all about pleasure. There's no real pressure. It's about relaxing, and that's our aim in the races. Donc c'est plus de la détente, on est plus dans l'optique de se détendre en course. Et voilà. Une nouvelle saison euh, qui débute. A new GT season then, and there are changes in GT. Le changement, non, principalement, c'est lié aux couleurs. The main change for us is the color of the car because we've harmonized things within the team. In the GTs and the Protos, we've got new colors and new ambitions. The organization has been simplified with Jean Claude. It's great, and it's like we've got something new with something old. Eh bien, vous une bonne well, we wish you a great 2015, and your GT race highlights are coming right up. Dans sa globalité, eh bien, on en regarde le résumé tout de suite. On the starting grid in six, the Audi 45 from the GTV2 category, driven by Thibaut Proust and Juice. In fifth, Balthazar, Ricci and Policon. In fourth, another Ferrari, Cordoni, Zanutini and Montemini. Third, Pani Perrier Bouvet in the Ferrari Visium number two. Second, another Ferrari, Bobalik, Bastien Vautier. And on pole, Canaroglu and Campos in the GTV2. They were the masters of the damp conditions in qualifying. A great start by the Ferrari 84. Tristan Vautier surprises Costas Canaroglu and takes the lead at the first corner. After five minutes, behind him, the Ferraris 2 and 51, and then the Porsche of the Lafargues. Patrice, the father, takes the start. The first earth-shaking moment arrives 45 minutes in as the splendid Ferrari number no. two spends a long time in the pits. Apparemment, Thierry, il a Apparently, perdu, uh, Thierry lost two cylinders. cylinders. We're still trying to work out what's going on. I know no more than that for now. It's a pity because he was right up there. And with Tristan's pace in the other car. There we go. I think it will be complicated now. We'll see what happens. And if we get going again, we'll be racing for racing's sake, as the saying goes. For now, I know no more. Well, racing for racing's sake, not so sure about that. We'll talk more about it later. As for the cause of this stop, we found out later that a spark plug was defective. Well, it's all going wrong for the Ferraris, it's just after that. It's the 83 of Balthazar, Ricci and Polycom forced into a long stop. And that puts an end to the hopes of a good result for the Acker ASP team. After a quarter of the race, the standings are fifth, the 84 of Bobalik Bastien Vautier. And in fourth, a newcomer, the Mercedes 70 of Stucky and Yearly. Well, let's get to know the team. The team has competed for a long time in the German DMVTC Championship. Last year, Edwin Stucky had a small health problem and I did the championship with them. We won it and that was something we couldn't have hoped for at the beginning. We decided to lay down a new challenge for this year, and as he wanted to race again, we said, well, sprint races with two in a car isn't very motivating. So we need to find a championship adapted to gentlemen drivers. We found it with the VDV. It was exactly what we were looking for. Let's carry on with the rankings. In third position, the Mosler number eight. In second, the Lafargues. And leading, the Ferrari of the redoubtable Cordoni, Zanutini and Montemini. Unfortunately, 30 minutes later, the Ferrari has a long pit stop with electrical issues. It means they definitively take leave of the leading positions. Another abandonment to be signaled, that of the Swiss Mercedes, which had climbed to third place. In GTV2, the battle is splendid between the Audi of Andeviva, Carigatti and Vegelin, the Porsche of Decurto and Fontaine, and another Audi, that of Thibaut Proust and Juice. An hour from the end, a surprise as Jean-Bernard Bouvet takes the Ferrari number two into the top five. On sait que dans le sport mécanique, malheureusement, you know, il y a des surprises. Sport, unfortunately, there are surprises, and that was the case for us. We spent eight minutes in the pits with electrical problems. We sorted them out, and Thierry got going again, never giving anything away. I put in a stint like nothing had happened, and we were up there in terms of performance. A last shake-up, 15 minutes from time. The 45, second overall, and leading the GTV twos, loses a considerable amount of time because of tyre problems. That all plays into the hands of the 11. Victorious then in GTV2. And there's another win for Patrice and Paul Lafargue. Second on the podium, Bobalik Bastien Vautier. 
And at the end, it's the Ferrari of Pani Perrier Bouvet in third place. Behind them in fourth, Van de Viva, Caragati, and Veglin. Fifth for Martinet, Tremblay, and Ledugar. Sixth for Fontaine and De Culto. Thibaut Proust and Jus are seventh. Canaroglu and Campos finish in eighth position. And so the curtain comes down on the first VDV weekend of 2015. It's bye bye to Spain. And in one month's time, we'll be in Italy at the magnificent Mugello circuit. Until then, it's goodbye from us.